The title of my sermon today is Shadows of the Cross. Can we ever guess what was accomplished in the death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth? It's so big I don't think we'll ever get to the end of preaching of it. But today I pray that we'll get some more revelation of what was in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to turn to the shadows of the old and um, see if it can give us some revelation into the new. So we're going to Exodus 3.16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, Jehovah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, hath appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen, focus on that word, I have seen that which is done to you in Egypt. Or in my words, what is being done to you. I want you to know that God sees... Exodus 4 verse 31 And the people believed and when they heard that Jehovah had visited the children of Israel that he had seen their affliction he'd seen their affliction I'm speaking to somebody today who maybe thinks that God didn't see everything they went through everything you suffered every affliction every evil word that was spoken against you, every sin that even you committed, and today you're ashamed of it. I want to tell you that God sees into your past, everything. The Jewish people are busy celebrating at the moment Passover because God redeemed them from slavery, and we celebrate this first fruits, Easter, whatever you want to call it, because we've been redeemed from spiritual slavery. God saw their past traumas, he saw their current slavery, and he promised them a bright future. I want you to see that even in the New Testament, in the fact that Jesus came and died and rose again, that he sees everything of your life. If God was interested in the past, the present, and the future in the shadow when Moses was on this earth, how much more in the cross? Because the cross is the completion of the shadow. It's the fulfillment of the shadow. And here we see that God says he's seen and he sees what was being done to the Israelites. And I'm yet today to tell you, God has seen what has happened in your life. And he sees what's happened in your life. Both past, present and future. He wants to bring redemption, not only one day in the sweet by and by. Isn't that wonderful? One day we're going to leave this stinking old earth with all of its problems and all of its politics. And we're going to go and be with Jesus. But Jesus wants to bring redemption to more than your future. He wants to bring redemption to your now. He wants to bring redemption to your past. This is an all-encompassing redemption. This is not a redemption that's stuck in time, that is stuck only in your today. But God is not stuck in time. God is in your past. He's in your present and he's in your future. And he can go back into your past right now as I'm preaching and redeem your past. Even the things that only you know about, you've never told another soul because it's too hurtful, it's too deep, it's whatever. He knows about that too. He wants to be with you in the now and we will dwell with him in the place that he's gone to prepare for us in the future. Can we go a little deeper than that? Why did God give Moses three signs that he had to do for the Israelites and for Pharaoh? 
And I'm sure you all, well, those of you that went to children's church in your sweet by and by, you know the three signs. The first one was a staff that turned into a snake that turned back into a staff. The second one was a perfectly good hand that when he put it into his uh, cloak and he pulled it out, it was leprous. But when he put it back in and pulled it out again, it came out perfectly good again. And the Nile that turned into blood. Now, those are three random signs. And um, you could think, why did God give those signs? Because they were very connected to what had happened in the past to the Jewish people. And the rabbis teach us that they understood the meaning of the signs. Uh, and so uh, that's another old sermon that I could teach you one day, but we're not going to get into that today. But just be with me that the three signs were very important to the Jewish people. The, the first sign was that you could take a perfectly good staff and Pharaoh had lied about the Jewish people. He said they breed like bugs. We've got to control their population. He dehumanized them. It's the same thing that Hitler said. They're not real people. And we can just exterminate them. It's what Pharaoh had said. And so he spoke a lie about them. And that was why the rod turned to a snake. And the people understood this. A normal hand turning into leprosy spoke about Pharaoh saying to the uh, midwives, go and uh, when the woman gives birth, if it's a son, then kill it, but say it was stillborn. It, it was a lie. It was about death. It was about a hand that was perfectly normal. And then you say, no, it's dead. But actually it was really alive. And the Nile that turned into blood, this was the very Nile that they threw thousands of little Jewish boys in that covered the sin. They disappeared into the Nile. Where's the evidence? There's no evidence. These little babies are bobbing down the river, maybe going as far as out to sea. I don't know how far they went. But the Nile covered the sin, but then God exposed that sin. You see, God was interested in what happened to those Jewish people, just the same as he's interested in you and what happened to you in your past. Everything that has happened to you in your past, everything that is happening to you right now, I'm here to tell you God is interested in it. I'm not dredging up these old things to try and create uh, sympathy for uh, Israel much as I love them. I'm dredging it up because I want to show you that God is interested in past, present and future. If we're going to be doing magic tricks, why did God not just say to Moses, pull a rabbit out of a tall hat? Yeah. Huh? He, he could have done any magic trick. It had to be these three specific things because it spoke to three specific evils that had been done to the Jewish people. You know, after all, Pharaoh's men could also throw down their staff and it turned to a snake. So it wasn't the best magic trick to come up with, was it? No, but it was specific. God was saying, I see you. I see you in your now. I see you in your past. I see you in your future. So I propose today that these three signs were more than just random signs to impress the people. They were a sign that God sees you. They were a sign that God saw what they went through. So Rabbi David Foreman plays a Bible game where have I heard this before? Uh, and it's a wonderful, wonderful, you must 
Make it one of the games that you play in your mind whenever you read scripture. Just ask yourself, where have I heard this before? So, how did Pharaoh convince the Egyptians to cast babies into a river? Why would normal... I've met Egyptians. They're not bad people, any worse than anybody else that I know. As a matter of fact, we loved the Egyptians. We got on very well with them. How did Pharaoh convince these normal Egyptian people, every time you see a little Jewish boy, throw him in the river? He had to convince them they were subhuman. They were bugs. They bred like bugs, like mosquitoes, all the things that we don't like, to control their population. Where have we heard about a snake that told a lie? Now I'm getting to Rabbi Foreman's game. A snake that told a lie all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And that was why the rod became a snake. Because it spoke about telling a lie. Telling a lie about these people. So the staff was a message. I heard the lie. God was saying, I get it. They lied about you. Has anyone ever told a lie about one of you? Or about me? I bet you they have. I've had more than one or two lies spoken about me. I'm sure you've been lied about. I'm here today to tell you that God heard the lie. God heard the criticism. Maybe it wasn't so much a lie as just a criticism. But God hears everything. He knows what you've been through. He knows what you're going through. And he knows what he has prepared for you. So next, Pharaoh told the midwives, Kill the baby boys and claim they're still born. It's a lie. And leprosy speaks of death. But even if you put your hand back in, it comes out alive. Those babies were born alive. And Pharaoh wanted them to be uh, killed and just say, ah, still born. Another lie covered up. But God sent a sign to say, I see these things. And the last one, the Nile that hid the deaths of these thousand little, thousands of little Jewish boys, it turns red, revealing what had been done. You see, you think you can get away with some stuff in life, but God saw everything. The only way to get away with it is to own up to it. And come to God and say, forgive me, God, for I've sinned. Forgive my sin and come and live in me. (laughs) Folks, Moses had a staff that turned to a snake, that turned back to a staff. And it's the same staff that he used to part the Red Sea. I don't know if you knew that, but it was Moses' staff that was used to part the Red Sea. The very lie that the devil told about you will cause you to come into your victory. I don't know if you knew that. But the things that came against you is going to be the thing that will propel you into your victory. So so you can be feeling downcast. You can be feeling like the whole world is against you. It's that very thing that God will use to part your Red Sea. I I don't know if that's a revelation to somebody, but it's a blessing to me. And later the snake was placed on a staff. The Israelites had sinned and there were snakes biting them. And God told Moses, make a bronze staff. A snake and place it on a staff and when they looked at that snake their life was saved folks the death and resurrection of Jesus was not just an idea that God came up with at the last moment it was planned since before the beginning of time and all throughout history these things point to that special day when Jesus would rise from the dead Every
every lie of Pharaoh was exposed and dealt with and points to the redemption of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the perfect rod, he became a snake. He became sin. Not his sin, my sin and your sin. He was hung on a tree like a snake. Like they put that bronze snake up on a staff. That we could be justified. Made right with God. But he rose again perfectly restored as the rod of Jesse. The Bible says he, he was the rod of Jesse. Perfectly restored. He didn't stay. He might have become sin for me. He might have become sin for you. He might have died on the cross. But he rose again as the rod of Jesse the, from the root of David to establish a kingdom that will live forever. Just as the leprosy was a picture of death, but it killed the Egyptians firstborn. Pharaoh's idea was to kill the Israelites. But what happened? The Egyptians firstborn was killed. But not how you might have thought in the womb. Because those Jewish boys were born alive. And the plan was after they born to kill them and say they're still born. And so how were the Egyptians killed? They died not in the womb but in the house. Exactly as Pharaoh had wanted to kill the Israelites. And the picture of the door with the blood on it, the blood on the lintels of the door, is a picture of a womb. And as the Jews hurried out of that door, it was like they came out of a womb and a nation was born in a day. The Jewish nation was born in a day, coming out of that womb with the blood on the top and on either side. It's a picture of a woman's womb. Born in a day. The Nile blood red exposing what had been done. But Jesus' blood runs like a river. Cleansing whomsoever will come. Amen. Whomsoever. Folks these Old Testament pictures. Were not just pictures for the sake of pictures. They all point to the cross. As a matter of fact, the river that flowed out of the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve were put out of the garden, they say that river turned red, flowed red. It's a picture of the blood of Jesus that would be shed for your past, your present and your future, just as for mine. I want to tell you that this river of Jesus' blood in this place is able to cleanse every one of your and my sins. Everyone. Jesus is more than a mere shadow. I've been looking at the shadows today, but right now I want to just tell you that Jesus is more than a mere shadow. He's alive. He's no longer in the tomb. If the shadow could take care of past hearts, uh, past hurts, lies, trauma, even your present difficulties, how much more the cross. And God has promised us a bright future, just as he promised the Israelites. You'll go into your promised land. And they had a long wait to get to their promised land because of their disobedience. So I charge you today, don't be disobedient to the word of God. It's going to keep you in the desert. God's plan for you is come out of the desert, come into the promised land, live in everything that God has prepared for you. Not just in the sweet by and by, oh, one day we're going to heaven and then we'll be poor no more. No, God wants to bless you in the here and the now. He wants to bless every part of our life. Step out of the shadows today into his glorious light over every dimension of your life. I'm telling you, I'm believing God this morning that 
things in the past that have shaped you will be shaken by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Things that have allowed you to stay in bondage because you've believed a lie. I come in the name of Jesus to break that bondage. Not by my own strength, but I stand in the authority of the bondage breaker. His name is Jesus. And he's given us authority on this earth. And so I speak to everyone that has a past that is wearing them down, that is keeping you from God's best in your life. I break it in Jesus' name. There's an anointing to break these things today that we come out of the, that just existing. God didn't plan for you to exist. He planned for you to thrive, to prosper, to live in health. The devil is a liar, man. He's tried to kill me at least three times in the last three years. And I'm still here to say that God is on the throne. He still cares for me. Every morning I wake up and I see um, I'm alive. I'm still here. It's all good. God has been good to me. Got another day to live for Jesus. Jesus has risen, folks. This is a special day. This is the first fruits of his resurrection. Luke 24, verse 38. And he said unto them. So I want to tell you that when it says, he said unto them, is in black. But what I'm about to say is in red because it's the very words of Jesus. And Jesus said, why are you troubled? It's a question mark there. Why are you troubled? We have so many worries and concerns like, like as if Jesus, who created all that you see and keeps the earth spinning on its axis and keeps the sun rising um, in the east and setting in the west and everything that he's done for us. Uh, and then we're troubled about little things. Jesus is speaking to you today and he's saying, why are you troubled? What are you troubled about, man? As if God can't fix it. The, the reason often things are broken is because we're not listening to God. We're not living in the overflow. We're living in depression. We're taking our depression pull because we're, we're not living uh, our best life for God. But all it takes is repentance, folks. Repentance is like weed killer. It's the strongest pill you'll ever take. It, it's not like a pill you can get from the pharmacy. Repentance is a pill that will change your life. You'll come out of brokenness into wholeness. You'll come out of poverty into God's provision. You know... God provided supernaturally, miraculously all the finances that I needed for my operation. Supernaturally. I, I don't need to worry about these things because God's got it. And then on top of that, we spoke to the doctors after the fact and uh, got some good discounts as well. Praise God. He cares for his children. I want you to live in that overflow. I don't want you to live in struggle. In poverty avenue. Come out of that man. And the words of Jesus continue. And wherefore do questions arise in your heart? Stop questioning God. Stop questioning if you're going to make it. Stop questioning if you're going to be alright. Why do you have these questions in your heart? Jesus is risen, my friend, and he's all-powerful. He's almighty. The devil is like a little mouse compared to Jesus. And the devil has got a loud hailer, and he gets in your ear and in my ear, and he goes chirp, 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 and tells you a whole bunch of lies, and we believe him. I'm here to tell you today, Jesus is risen. Amen. 